be back on the estate tomorrow night when Karen finds out if Sharon's half-sister is also Barry's long-lost brother and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue. It's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in Live and Spooky. And tonight, they'll be asking if the old brewery in Arsenal... I'm, no, I'm not getting into a fight with Dave. You're just going to have to go up there and explain it to him. I mean, it's just counting for fuck's sake. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit scared of him too. You know, a bit. But, and my face is more valuable than yours. So if anyone's going to get punched, it's probably better that it's you. Yeah, you could probably get lucky. You're probably just kicking the... Yep, standing by. Good evening, I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend, now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just The Job, but as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three, Just can't stay the course. I got just the job. When you smell an odor, but you just can't find the source. I got just the job. Give me a moment, I'm Brian Breeze, Jeff. I'll take my great big punches and I'll slip it down your trail. And once I'm finished pumping. This is your show, need a yeah. Cause that's just a job. Thank you, girls. Cracking stuff. Cracking stuff. Good evening, friends. And yes, it's true, I can hardly really believe it myself. Yes, but we are back with this special one off reunion episode of Just the Job. And to be clear, it's the show that you remember. With the old psychic, little Jimmy's chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY. And of course, some special guests from Just the Job's illustrious past. And I know what you're all thinking. Oh, there's an election coming up. Well, there'll be no politics tonight. Not on this show, and that is a Peter Clement promise. So let's kick tonight off with a slightly askance look at the mighty bevel, because you never know. Just hold it right there, please. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's you. Yeah, it certainly is me. Oh, you naughty, <laughs> naughty fucker. <laughs> Sorry, Frank, Frank, did you know about this? <laughs> yeah, look at that face. Of course you fucking did. Peter, you fuckers. You thought you were here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just the Job. I can't believe it. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. <laughs> Let's get you back to the studio, you fuckers. I'm gonna have you. And I can't bloody bit those bloody gaps are about all the way along. They do. They're all part of this way, Peter. Mind just step there now. I don't know. I can't believe it. Honestly, I'm right. Right. What happened in your dream about me? I told you I had a dream about you. That's not important. What happened in the dream? It was this show going wrong over and over again. It sounds excellent. Sometimes Mr. Clement was drunk or angry. And Eamon. Oh, poor Eamon. And in every dream, it was your fault. That's weird. Probably an Eamon. Oh, there's Eamon. Gotta go. Don't fuck up the show, Dream Breaker. Dave Dream Breaker. I like that. Maybe I'll have him put on a T-shirt. Eamon. Eamon. How long have you been planning, Eamon? Eamon.
Peter Gordon Clement. You were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. I know, right? Fucking tear away, they made of you. That's right, they got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. No, I didn't. It's your infamous old man. No, it isn't. And her long suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. You're not there. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just stick to the script, see what happens. You pop your piece in there and then head over to the sofa. Right, you all get. Hello, pets. Make the best of us. And not the worst. Chelsea, bloody bugs. Hey, Peter, bloody Clement. Oh. <laughs> OK, lovely, lovely. Let's all take a seat now. That's great. So, um, lovely to have you both here. Uh, let me ask you, um, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? Oh, no. uh, well, I think, well, for both of us, really, it was, uh, well, it was about his father's, right? I mean, mine, well, he were never there because, what, what with work and, and the pub, of course. But I reckon that were a lot easier than it were for our PT because there's no mark of a father. We're always there. Ah, uh, me ma'am kept him in line most of the time. Yeah, she did, love. But, I mean, I mean, what, what about when she went to bingo or... Oh, you know, when she took that part-time evening job? I kept her safe. <laughs> Come on, P.T. Love. I've spent my whole bloody life trying to make up for the lack of love off me pa, right? But, and I'm sorry to say this, love, but P.T. here, well, he, he spent his whole life trying to make up for the lack of happiness. Oh, that's not fair. I had a good childhood, for the most part. You didn't, P.T. For the most part. You didn't, P.T. Sorry, love, but, well, neither of us did. Well, that got serious quickly. Uh, Chelsea, what's your name? Uh, Chelsea, Chelsea Bonds. Do you want me number? Chelsea Bonds, everyone, with the first of the bits of your life. <laughs> so, how are you? Are you married? How many kids have you No bones for me, love. I mean, I did get pregnant once, you know, but uh, I couldn't make it. I mean, it was during the war. I didn't even know who's it were, to be honest. But, um, well, you know, then something went wrong. And then after that, I just couldn't have any more. Oh, so, Chelsea, that's awful. Yeah, it is, look. But then, that's life, isn't it? It is awful sometimes, but you just got to keep on fighting. That you do. Oh. oh. In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? Well, if you don't know my voice by now, we may well have lost the election. Well, it's Julia Salisbury. No, it isn't. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bond. She has literally just been on, Amen. They called me Ernie. There's yeah, something's gone wrong with the scheduling. Some prick called Dave, apparently. Shall we? <laughs> oh, he's getting proper pissed Chelsea. off. <laughs> Chelsea. Julia. Yeah, it says Chelsea Julia. in the script. Yeah, it says Chelsea in the script. Would you like to call me Chelsea? Actually, like yeah, that'd be really helpful. Chelsea? Right. Actually, well. yeah, that'd be really Excellent. So, Chelsea, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring Prime Minister? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I wasn't there, of course. You're one of his childhood sweethearts, according to the script. You're one of his childhood sweethearts, according to the Seems unlikely, given our ages. Given our ages. Can you talk about it anyway? Can you talk about it anyway? Um, um, well, 
I would imagine that uh, that Peter was was quite charming in his heyday and and probably left behind a, a trail of broken hearts. Uh, just a couple. Trail of broken hearts. And I regret them both an enormous amount. Oh, how romantic! Julie Hambrake, everybody. <laughs> Well, before we bring our next guest on, well, let's have a look at a classic clip on. from Just let's the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to take a look. Oh, I still remember it like it was yesterday. And that's about two minutes. Right, I'm going for a closer look, see if it cheers me up a bit. I took Peter to one side while Jimmy did his solo spot Jim's things. I didn't want Peter to hear it from anyone else. Anyway, what happened next is history. Well, let me tell I think, you, okay. Is this some sort of fucking joke, Eric? Why would I want to be reminded of that? I, I don't choose the plane. It's, it's, it's some bloke called David. Oh, he's proper angry now. That's me. Right. I remember that. Can we reset, please? Shit. I'm going to have to leave the country. Not really, old James. What's the matter? You look like you walked in on your parents. Leave it, mate. Leave it. We just had a fax from the higher ups. Those who know better. I thought I might read it out for the viewers at home. What's going on? Well, I know what you're thinking. A fax? How modern! Well... <clears throat> to whom it may concern, latest viewer feedback from test audience. Show and host feel tired and past their prime. Show and host, fuck's sake. Sidekick. Looks like he'd rather be somewhere else most of the time. Third point. Bringing Frank on camera regularly has not improved engagement. The audience say, yeah, Frank. Jesus, Pete, my mum watches this. The guests are mostly unknown to the audience. Then don't cut our fucking budget. You want, you pay peanuts, you get these fucking monkeys. I'm doing my best. Look, it's not your fault, Nashy Norman, but to be fair, you're a one-and-done act. I've got range. Have you? Uh, no, not really. New segments seem desperate. Uh, should we really be reading this out? Well, of course they're desperate. We've been doing this show since you prosperous assholes were just the bulge in your pool boy's trousers. PC, think it through, mate. Under the circumstances, the prudent option seems to be curtail the current season to a contractually obligated conclusion in three weeks. What? Frank? Sorry, Jimmy. True, mate. Three more shows? Yeah. And then we're done? Yep. How am I going to pay my bills? Good night, mate. No, 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 no. I am not... According to the script, it's little Jimmy Chisel next, Eric. Is it little Jimmy Chisel? I keep telling you, Eamon, I'm not in charge of that. For God's sake, how hard can it be? I mean, they're all out there. The guests are in the holding area. In the right order. In the right bloody order. One, two, three, four, five, six. You count them in. I know, Eamon. I know. One, two, three, four, five, six, Eric. Not two, six, four, one, three, five, or whatever random gobbledygook happens to spill out of your head. Ten seconds, everybody. Little Jimmy Chisel. Please, Eric. OK, we're going in five, four, three. called his bluff, of course. Off the lot, that what fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. I have an enormous tool up me. Ah, Christ! Oh no, he's Peter Clement. Not so enormous. That's right, a man who needs no introduction, but we're giving him one anyway. It's not your sidekick of almost 13 years, little Jimmy Chisel. It's... Christ, it's some sort of bloody yeti. Christ, it's some sort of bloody yeti. Ha <laughs> ha!
Ah, no, 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 no. Not there, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight into this bit. This Yerkistanian special reserve vodka. It like fire in you. Men have given up their virgin children for just one glass of this. That's probably not true. Uh, for every drop you spill, I cut off one finger with this. Oh, that, that's a bloody big one you've got there. <laughs> yes, it was my grandmother's. Uh, put it away, mate. Stop the theatrics and pour the bloody drinks. Stop the theatrics and pour the bloody drinks. Surprised they let you into the studio with that, you know. Thought there would have been uh, some sort of search or something. You don't search an ambassador, pal. Anyway, he's got diplomatic immunity. He could cut your tongue out and they couldn't touch him. Cut your tongue out and they couldn't touch him. Down in one, yes. Like village sex goat. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that means. I don't even want to know what that means. Oh, he's having a drink. Oh, Jesus, erase your quick sniffing Christ. What the what hell is that? That, Peter Clement, is the reason that you wake up in morning in cell. Facing firing squad, yes. <laughs> Another. Oh, let's just, just, just give us just just a minute, pal. That first one is still stripping the skin off my stomach. It's still stripping the skin. Peter Clement and I fight in war together, Dazzle men. Ah, the units are in Conislava. We are ambushed. Smoke is everywhere. It's burning my eyes. I'm separated from my squad. Lost in fog. I hear bullet whiz past the ear. I hear you hear whiz bullet past whiz past the ear. I was in a fairly competitive darts match once. No, darts no, not really. no, not really. Out of smoke come man wearing mask. Smoke is not just smoke, you see, it's a poison gas. He come over to me, take off mask and put on my face. He lead me out of fog. We share mask. Pass back, and mask, forth. pass back and forth. He bring me to cellar under shop. He bring me to cellar we collapse shop. there, coughing out knock from lungs and crying. Five days we were there, at what we could find. Five days we were there. Mainly dog food. And a tin of peaches, but we did spill most of it fighting over it. Peaches, but we did spill most of it. The morning of sixth day, morning all is quiet day. above. All is quiet. We venture out. We venture no one out. is there. It's like, uh, how you say? Like Ghastly town. Ghost town. Ghastly Nothing but ghost corpses. Town. Cinders. Corpses. No one is there. No one is Everybody is gone. Everybody is we gone. fight to death over small town and we fight to death over small town. Nobody wanted it anyway. We didn't even Nobody find out who won that day. We didn't even Nobody find out win. who won that day. Everybody lose. Everybody lose. Except maybe us. Except maybe us. Took nearly. Four weeks crossing country before we got to command. By the time we reached it, we'd had a few scrapes. And we knew we'd be friends for life. And we knew we'd be friends for life. Oh, bottom's up. So what are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Simple. On screen, Peter Clement never had to kill anyone. Ah, yes, and actually we've got some archive footage here which shows exactly what you're talking about. Oh, dear God, I hope we don't. Uh, <laughs> let's go to that now, shall we? Let's go to that now, shall we? Well, when it's a fiddly task, I know a little fella who's just the job. Let's turn to my trusty seven-inch... Um, my trusty... My trusty... Uh, Who's been messing with my tools? Who's been messing with my tools? I'm not kidding, Frank. Someone's been messing with my tools. He should be here, she should be there, and this fella's all wonky look. LJ! LJ! Tool me up! Don't, don't give me that shit. Have you been using my tools? Have you been touch your tools, boss? Everyone knows they're the love of your life. I'm not doing a bit, LJ. Huh? Someone's been in here and mucked everything up. Should we just cut here? No! Frank! No! No! We should not just fucking cut! 
Let's keep the cameras rolling and see who's getting fired, shall we? No one's getting fired, Peter. He hates it when people use his tools. Not helping, Jim. Who's been at my fucking tools? No one's been at your tools. Remember half an hour ago when you came back from lunch, staggering round here trying to find somewhere to piss? You knocked them off. You did it. So I picked them up like I always do, put them back in, so you wouldn't have to. Because the only one messing with your tools is you. Okay? Okay. So I... Yes. So I... Yes. When I... Again. Yes. Again. Yes. <sighs> well, this is bloody awkward. <laughs> bloody awkward. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Sorry, LJ. Such a dangly twat. Bash. Who's been at my tools? <laughs> uh, well, viewers, I think we've all learned something today. Don't get plastered at lunchtime. Oh, no, giant. No, we're never going to learn that. Hey, viewers. No, what I've learned today is... What I've learned today is... Always set your toolbox back from the edge of the shelf. God, I'll be misfiling the hinges next, honestly. I'll be misfiling the hinges next. <laughs> Yet more anger. None of the old spark there. <laughs> Where did you show that, spark Eric? There. What? Where did you show that? Seven years of footage, what? and you show a clip Seven that makes me look like a complete a prick. Like a it's a very human moment. Don't ambush me, Eric. I'm not in the fucking Don't mood. Ambush me, Eric. I'm not. He's very unpredictable drink. You try. Oh, no, I, I think it'd probably kill me. <laughs> to be fair, I was pretty pissed that day. When Dotty and I went for a, some pints and chases at the Bull and Bullock. Is that an actual pub? I'm not normally an angry man. I'm not normally... Unless he wants his share of peaches. Unless he wants his share Another. of peaches. Uh, do you think that's a good idea? There is nothing wrong with anger, my friend. Anger is how we survive, Kolislava. I'm too old for anger. And yet it's still luck within you. And yet it's still luck within you. To the blood in us all. To the blood in us all. <laughs> oh, oh drink again. Right. Let's get you Let out of here. Right. Ladies and gentlemen of... Ladies and gentlemen of... Magnificent Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Channel your rage. It make you mad. In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Well, a good war is like a good orgy. Everybody ends up feeling dirty, as they say in the seminary. It's your friend of 40 years, the current Irkestanian ambassador to the capital. Oh, no. oh, that's who that was. Oh, yeah, makes sense now. It's me ma'am, Eamon. Right, Char, your mum. <laughs> Get on with it, woman. Help me, Martin. Oh, Jesus, erase your wife, be the crack. You're fucking useless. You're gonna have to force it in. Well, it's not going in that hole without a dab of butter, as the shepherds say. Give me an ear. Oh. Why must you always be so loud? You can bloody talk. Let's go over it. Talking on bloody day. I've always got a bloody headache. Hello. You don't just stand there. Give us a pull. Mum. <laughs> Let's get on with this then, shall we? Oh, have you got somewhere you need to be? Snooker's on at nine. You'll be asleep in front of it by five past. Must you belittle me everywhere I go, woman? <laughs> What's that, son? Oh, there's the anger. No, go on, go on. Say it for once in your Ponzi celebrity life. I said. I said. Now for drink to go on the list. Yourself. That's right, is it? Yeah, the way you speak to our mum. Oh, yeah, I don't mind. But you should mind, ma'am. You 
Good mind. It's just his way. No, 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 no. Don't just let him off like that. He's a bully. I never took my belt off to you unless you really deserved it. I had to hide from you. Under the stage at the bloody school. It was the only safe place I had. You ungrateful little gobshite. I don't have to sit here and listen to this. Come on, Fanny, we're leaving. Come on, Fanny, we're leaving. See you after, eh? Jesus, a ratio knob slurper Christ. The ingratitude! Ingratitude! Fuck off! Ingratitude! Fuck off! Mr. and Mrs. Tement, everybody! That is my pa! Yeah, no, don't bother me, don't. Well, it wasn't only just the job that got you into the nation's homes. Starting in 1977 and running for six years, you brought your inimitable Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late night chat show, Petey. Let's take a look at a clip of that now. Let's take a look at a clip of that now. And a couple of minutes back. Gratitude, bastard. I'm going for a smoke. He's to call him the ventriloquist. He can't even be asked to throw his own voice. They're roaring at each other. Roaring. Yeah, I saw that. It's very Not tense. Don't let it get to you, Eamon. Uh, Please. Absolutely screaming mm. at each other in her office. Mm. Even with the door shut, you could hear the swear words. Actually, it wasn't uncommon. Peter and Dorothy, and Miss Hammerman, had a very... Uh, <laughs> Are you taking oh, won't like it? that. Are you really trying to piss me off now? I, I, I don't choose this. Yeah, I remember fucking Dave. Can we reset everybody? Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Just don't bring that fucking Polly on or I'll burn the fucking studio down. Should I say, guests are sure to be a bit of a handful. Expect the unexpected. From Tim Hill. And Polly! <laughs> oh, she's a bit protective. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Grab a, grab a chair. Oh, sorry, I don't know what's oh. happened. There's normally a table here. Oh, don't worry about that. She likes it up close and personal. I bet she does. <laughs> what's wrong, Paul? She says you should apologise for casting aspersions on her character. Oh, right you are. Sorry, Polly. She says you should apologise with a kiss. <laughs> Careful of your thing, you'll get me into trouble with Mrs. C. She says she's not afraid of Mrs. C. I can't say that. But I can't. She says she's got nicer legs than Mrs. C and Anita. Watch yourself, pal. I told you we wouldn't like it. Mrs. C is a very private person. I would thank you. I would thank you both to leave her out of this. Got that, Paul? <laughs> Quiet, you lot. She really is very soft. Like that. Yeah, I can see she does. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 take it easy there, Polly. But, hey, hey, it's not me, it's her. She must, she must really like you. Yeah, yeah, watch it, watch it there, pal. Oh, hey, got it, got it. Look, the camera, darling. Hey, yes, that's my, no, stop, 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 stop. stop. And we must have touched the nerve there. Eh? That's not the only bloody thing you touched. Is that, Paul? It better be a bloody apology. You can't just go I around touching people. That. What did she say? Oh, yes, you can. She says, if that's your J. Johnny Johnson, she feels sorry for me. So, C. next is supposed to be Obviously, Dorothy Hammerman. And the odds of her coming through that entrance are empirically one in two, experientially, I'd say zero. Marvellous. Bad feeling. Ten seconds, everybody. It'll be fine. Bad feeling, Eric. Okay, we're going in five, four, Three. And Polly. 
unforgettable stuff. Unforgettable but while you took all the credit, arguably someone else did all the work, didn't they now? What are you trying to say, Eamon? He definitely won't lie there. It's in the script. Are you calling me an ingrate too, pal? Are you no, 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 no. Do you I'm... want me to come over there? No, 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 you're fine where you are. No, don't bother. No, no, Maybe no, no, have a nice no, coffee. Yeah, Eric, can we get him a coffee? You want to watch your fucking <laughs> mouth, pal? <laughs> <laughs> right, Jar, yeah. Who's out there, for Christ's sake? Who's out me up. Oh, thank Christ. It's little Jimmy Chesel. <laughs> you are clear. Boss. Oh, Having fun. Having fun. Oh dear. Sorry to hear that. Mm. No. Not really. Is it safe now? Calm down. Never calm. Oh good, Eamon. Oh good, Eamon. Great, great, super lovely, pretty fantastic, super great, really, really good, great. great. Eamon, for fuck's sake, ask a question. For fuck's sake, ask a question. So, uh, PT ran for nearly six years. What are your favourite memories from all those shows? Really? All those shows. That's what it says in the script. What was my favourite moment from PT? Yep. My favourite moment. A show I wasn't in and never watched. A show I wasn't in and never watched. Yeah. Well, I imagine it was some lumbering turd of a show that somehow got by on what others would call that Peter Clement charm. Nice. I'd imagine Pete was a drunk throughout and uh, a bully to his co-workers. Where's all this coming from, LJ? It's just Jim, OK? Just fucking Jim. That's fucking hard, is it? Jim. Fucking hard, is it? You might want to moderate your tone. You might want to moderate your tone. Jim. Or what? You put a fucking hammer through my foot again. That was just a laugh. You found it funny at the time, I remember. No! You found it funny, you cunt! You found it funny, I think an apology is old. I think an apology is old. Sorry. Sorry. Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! <laughs> and that brings us to last year when you surprised the whole country you by announcing you were giving it all up to form a new political party. And, and because the final part of bits of your life is always the future... I think your future might involve stitches, darling. OK, that's Dorothy Hammerman. Dorothy Hammerman, everybody! Actually, <laughs> I think you should have brought the father back, Eamon, darling. I'm starting to think no one's in control of the calls. Yes, it does seem to be a show coordinated by a madman. Thanks very much. Don't get up, sweetie. That looks very nasty. Uh, should we call an ambulance? Nah, it's just a scratch. I've had plenty worse. Prick and belly punch! Fuck you! If you say so, darling. Uh, Amy, it might be a good idea to have a medic waiting at the end of the show. That's a great idea, Mrs Hammerman. Eric! That's a great Eric. idea, Mrs Hammerman. Eric. My Eric. Eric. Come here, sweetie! Come here, sweetie! <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Hammerman. Oh, how Hello, formal. How <laughs> Let me look at you. Oh, look how you've grown. Yeah, look I, I, I work here now. Yes, not for long. No, no, please don't fire me. I'm not the one who chooses the guest list. No, 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 you misunderstand me. I've just come off a call with Bob Bozeman on my mobile telephone, and I can officially announce that this show is going to make the historic move to Channel 3. What's that now? Yes, new set. New theme tune might even get you a new jacket, Eamon. This is your last show on Channel One, so you're better making a good one. The, the last guest just hit the main guest in the face. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, darling. Cracking stuff. This is what television will be in the next millennium. So let's get on with it, shall we? Question, Eamon. Right. Well, we're, we're so delighted you could. Uh, ah, no, 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 we, we don't need that. Ah. Um, no, 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 we, we don't need do you think uh, Peter Clement is a good fit for politics? Think, uh, well, I don't do politics, politics, darling. You know that. 
Fantastic. Well, we've got a real treat coming up for you, but before we do, let's take a look at the current Peter Clement. This is you, just a few weeks ago, at the debate. Just a few weeks ago, at the debate. Why is it always the same with you lot? Every four or five years, you come around telling us what we want to hear. You talk about stability, you talk about hope, you talk about trust, and then one of you wins, and it doesn't really matter which one. To be honest, and then you get on with your life and nothing, fucking nothing changes. <laughs> Very passionate, if totally inaccurate. Yes, I agree with Jacob. Yeah, of course you do. That's the old bloody problem. Your passion is so infectious, so attractive. The polls tell us that. But where does that passion lead? How will your passion help when our neighbours are laughing at your ridiculous monetary policies? When you bankrupt within the nation, what will your passion do then? Hmm? Will it turn to anger and start a war, I wonder? I am the only man on this stage who has actually fought in a war. <clears throat> Perhaps you should remember that, Mr Hamilton man. What we offer in our party is moderation. We won't make the radical changes that Mr Clement's party promises, but that's because, well, we rather like this country as it is. Yes, there are inequalities that need easing, and yes, Mr Hamilton, man, and I disagree on how much should be spent on health, policing, and, of course, education. But where we agree and, and why this country has lasted is that we know change must be slow. Slow and consensual. You have to take the public with you. The public are with us. <laughs> For now, you're new. You wait until the media start pecking at you. Wait until the gloss comes off your shiny, utopian policies. <laughs> yes, honeymoon periods only last so long, you know? We will bring this nation together. <laughs> Perhaps. But it's more likely you will start a civil war. Well, in just five short weeks, we'll find out if those words hold true. Christ, I hope not. But for tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. Take it away, boys! What you said? What you fucking look at? No fucking much. Ah, come on, now let's just do the song and we got you. them fancy men. Let them solve their problems like men, yeah. Could you please put the knife down, Mr. Bunnish? Go on, son. Fucking twatty. It's only for effect, no worry. I am quite worried. You want to do this, do you? On national television. Oh, seems fitting. What's up? Piss ass about. Yeah. Come on, then. No, 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 Pinky, go. It's not worth it, look. Shut up, you stupid thing. Who has your opinion? You're as loud mouth now as you were back then when you were the town bike. All you bloody women of the set. <laughs> This is on you! This is on you! All of it! <coughs> Seek stone the generations stone like bloody mold! You bully me, I bully him! You and this! <laughs> this is where it all ends up! I'm sorry, man. Hear me! Sorry, man. It is old father. Oh, stop making a fuss, Martin. It's not the first time and it won't be the last. After all, if you stick your cock through a hole, you can't be complain about what sucks it, as they say at the town hall. Look around you, mate. Look at it! The bits of your life are a fucking joke. You want me to go after him? No, 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 mate. We're not in Konoslava now. Let's just, just go somewhere and just pass out. Good idea. Splendid show. I go and vomit. I think we'd better get you boys looked at. Yes, dear. We have a medic over here. Yes, dear. We have a medic over here. Okay, right. We do the song. Oh, yes, Eamon and Beck. Come on, let's do the song. Yes, yes, the song. How wonderfully bittersweet. I really should get back to campaign. We're going to do the bloody song! I've had a knife put to me throat, so we're doing the bloody song. Okay. 
song. Okay, well, okay. we'll do the bloody song. Okay. Thank you. Bring it in, boys. Okay, yeah, uh, the words are on the auto cue there. See, you know, we'll all just sing it together, okay? Right? Okay, here we go now. Two, one, two, three, four. When you're feeling angry. I thought if I did the show might end and I might finally get home to my many children. 6.30 a.m. in my offices, please, gentlemen. We've got futures to plan! We've got futures to plan! 6.30 in the morning! Does she not sleep? Do you ever feel like you're running in circles? Right, let's check out the score. He's such a sweetie when he's on...